guys, this is where I took some of the cuttings from this plant, from this giant pothos, and I also took some from my other very large one downstairs. So this beauty Hey guys, welcome back. I showed up. I'm Krista from Plant Lux, and I am here for you probably uh, a couple times a week once I get back into the swing of things from work. Sorry, I've been busy at work lately. Um, yeah, so there's that. But I'm here today, and today I thought we would talk about how to stake up a plant. Um, I've staked up several plants, and today I thought I would do a pothos. How are you today? I am doing great. And um, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, so let's just get right into it. Today the idea is to show you how to stake up a plant. So if you see behind me, there are several staked up. We have this Monstera Edisonii, and we have this really gorgeous red emerald philodendron. Now, granted, a plant like this to get this tall generally takes, you know, several years. <laughs> um, this one over here, this one over here, this is a Monstera Addisonii wide form that I got when it was a little baby and it started about down here. So very close to the bottom. So just so you know, to stake up a plant, it does take patience for it to fill up the pole. So for a while, you'll be seeing a lot of the part of the stake, but with time, eventually it will get covered. I thought this would never happen, but here we are. And now it's overgrown its stake. So yeah, so if you wanna come in really quick, I just wanna to talk to you guys about how there are different ways to stake up your plant. So if you see here, I bought this stake right here at Walmart. I bought it for uh, $4.95, I believe, and it was in the garden section and um, I cut it in half and I used the other stake in another one of my plants. So this is half, uh, half the size, so 250, okay? And then I used twine and I tied it, I tied it with twine all the way up as it grew. Okay, so that's how I did this one. So as you can see, the back side of this uh, pole is very bare, whereas the front side, is very full. And that's simply because where I have this and how I have the plant potted around it, if you look at the base, I only had a certain number of plants. So I still have to plant, plant back here. I have soil back here. I just haven't gotten around to put, actually putting a plant right here. But all of my plants are in the front. I knew that this was going to be a project when I started it. So that's why I didn't, uh, I didn't have enough plants for the size of uh, Monstera Addisonii that I wanted, but um, I knew with time I would just keep on building on it. So anyway, so that's how it looks from far away. So as you can see, this one has uh, staples from a staple gun and twist ties to hold it into place. So that's another idea, really great. Honestly, this method is probably the best, but you'd have to have a good staple gun and then you have to buy these twist ties. They're like bread ties, but that's what... That's what this stuff is for, for too, that they used up here. So that's another method of staking a plant. Okay, so same method like this one was used on the green emerald. However, you come in really close. So what the, this what happened with this one is it started out with the staples, but then the roots themselves wrapped around as it went and the staples were removed. And the only thing holding this on the pole now are the aerial roots. So, but again, like I said, that, that takes a long time to get a plant to do that. Now, if you look at this one here too, the same thing holds true with this one, if you could get real close in. See the aerial roots and how they are wrapped around the pole? 
So the idea is that eventually you take these off because you don't need them anymore and then the, the stem can grow thicker. So that is the idea. But now these are adhered pretty well and there, there is no longer a need for you know, the attachment. Now, what you don't want to do is to directly staple or wire in onto the pole so you can't remove it. This is temporary. The twine is temporary. The twist ties are temporary. So the idea is that, you know, you're getting it on the pole, the aerial roots will eventually be the thing adhering to the pole. So but that does take several years, okay? All right, so let's just get right into it. Uh, you know, for those of you that don't have a pole handy, maybe you have a, a slightly skinnier piece of wood. This is a piece of cedar. Um, I ran out of poles, so I'm not gonna use a pole today, but I am gonna use this piece of cedar. My soil mixture in here, we have, uh, you know, the coir in here, we've got perlite, pumice, and uh, I'll put the, the ratios up on the screen. Um, and I also have some uh, like pebble rocks and gravel in there to add weight and to add drainage. So I'm just gonna stick this down the center and uh, how do you know what what height pole to use or stake you know it's totally up to you I'm just using this one because I like the size of it and I think it'll be a really pretty plant I took some cuttings from my pothos um, several different pothos cuttings here that I plan to use so you're gonna want to, uh, you know, if you, you have a house plant and you wanna stake it up or you wanna create a new plant, I would go ahead, find some long vines like this to cover up the pole, especially if you're impatient like me and you can't wait for it to grow onto the pole. All right, so you gotta make sure you have some aerial roots and some nodes. That one's a good one. This is a good one. It's a good one. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied because I have a lot of cuttings over there. So let's just take these back to the stake. All right, and then I'm going to want to place this around the stake and push it down to the soil. These ones are more variegated, so I'm keeping my eye on, what do I want my plant to, I definitely want this one because it has this giant leaf on it and I dig that, I love that. So I'm gonna place these around the pole, stick it down and make sure that aerial root gets down in there because the aerial root is what's gonna push those nutrients up the pole, up the pole, <laughs> up through the leaves. So these are the aerial roots that we're talking about here. These ones have some really nice aerial roots on them. And these are the things that are gonna eventually adhere to the, to the stake or to the bowl. I'm just placing these around. I'm gonna tie them off at the end. Nice roots, check that out. Nice aerial roots. There's something so satisfying about sticking these into the soil. <laughs> Can't really describe what it feels like, but it's just it's so satisfying.
I'm just gonna go ahead and do the twist tie. I wish I had my staple gun with staples in it. That's ideal for me, but, because I feel like this is a, a lot of twine, a lot of um, twist tie to use, but you know, as it grows and adheres, we can reuse it and recycle it, I guess. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we like the way this looks better. Yeah, I like, and I like the way that it's, I like this better. Okay, that's, that's better. Now, if you don't like yours to come straight up, straight off like that, that's a you decision. I'm doing it up and off. Uh, it's an experiment to see what happens here, but yeah, that's okay. You can always clip it and propagate it and put it back later. So this, uh, this honestly takes a little bit of patience, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, you know, don't ever try to do this when you're in a hurry because it, end, it would end up being tedious. So just, just kind of, you know, note to self, <laughs> make sure you block off enough time to uh, give yourself because it is a little tedious because you're trying to you're trying to adhere vines to a stake or a pole. And I, I honestly believe the most enjoyable method is the staple gun with the twist tie method. I feel like it just, it's more smooth and, it, and it's a lot easier to do. Just, you know, kind of keep that in mind as you plan your projects. Notice how I'm using the leaves to also hold up the, the vines. A couple of things that you should know for about you know staking your plant. 
uh, to review. Make sure that you're not tying the, um, the twist ties too tightly. Make sure that if you're using twine or another um, you know, method of tying it onto a pole that you are doing it loose enough for it to grow, but not so loose that it's flopping around. Okay, and then when it does start to fill in, you know, you can obviously propagate and clip and replant wherever you think you might need to do that. Now, I obviously I have enough here for a couple of more plants, so I'll probably save these for another time. Um, yeah, and as far as soil for, for your plant, that's particular to your plant. For a pothos, I, I use a, a pretty a well draining mixture. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna put this in the sun and I wouldn't fertilize it right away necessarily, but if you have a, a really um, diluted fertilizer, you could if you wished to. Um, yeah. So guys, um, what you're gonna wanna do after you know, you've know you put your aerial roots into the soil is you're gonna wanna give it a thorough watering and you're gonna wanna make sure that the water comes out of the drainage holes. Um, you know, if you don't wanna use a watering can, stick it in the sink and spray it off, that works too. So I would spray it off with a hose and make sure that you're getting that soil really padded down. And then I would sprinkle the top of it with a little bit more topsoil to make sure that those aerial roots are in the soil so that they can grow and give you years of beauty and a gorgeous plant. So let's do this. So that's about it for today's um, Stake It Up. I hope you enjoyed me staking up this beautiful golden pothos. And I will keep you guys posted um, about, you know, the development of it over the next, you know, six months or so. I'll try to post like a picture every month or so to let you know how it's going. So yeah, take a good look because when you see this guy next time, he's going to be pretty full and pretty awesome. So thank you very much for joining me in today's video. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm reach other viewers who are into plantsy material and, you know, uh, plant channel. So I really appreciate you uh, joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So I'm gonna sign off now. Bye. So this beauty is always shooting out new growth. I'm always having to propagate it and it is just a monster. See how giant these stems will get over time with maturity. That's how giant they get, but it starts out small on the bottom and the leaves get larger as it goes up the pole. So even the stems themselves down here are very small and they don't really get giant until they, they reach maturity and they go up. So this is what a very full grown mature pothos looks like and it is a beauty and I highly recommend you having one in your home. I know I love mine. When you have a big giant beauty like this though, you have to make sure you don't miss a watering because if you do, you will get brown spots. You have to make sure you can get this guy well, well watered, especially when it's a plant this big and a pot this small. That's it.